With just a burst of power, Uki defeats everyone, leaving only the main henchman for last, as he wants to see him suffer up close. Terrified of the powerful wizard, he quickly reveals his employer, Jin Mu. After that, Uki takes Yul to receive treatment. Unfortunately, he is teetering on the edge between life and death, and the consequences if he dies will be dire, as his father, a great general, will seek revenge, and a war between the kingdoms will ensue. Jin Mu is horrified to discover that Uki has slaughtered his soldiers and is advancing towards him to punish him. Swords, magic, arrows, nothing works against the powerful wizard from Songrip. When Uki is about to enter, the prince appears to try to stop him, as this could be detrimental to Uki himself in the future. More royal soldiers emerge, but this time, Uki is not alone. Parkjin abandons his retirement and arrives at the scene with the best warriors from Songrim to support him. Ukui says he will respect the prince and won't invade the property, but only if he hands over Jin Mu. Jin Mu tries to seek protection from the assembly, but everyone is afraid and urges him to surrender to avoid a war. He encounters the prince who pressures him, saying that Uki won't back down. With no other options and terrified, Jin Mu is forced to humble himself to his sister, Lady Jin, as she is the only one who knows the solution to the worm's disease that is in Yul's body. The prince arranges a meeting between the two parties, and she tells Uki that she will help him save Yul, and for that, she will use the Firebird. However, she has a condition. She will only save Yul's life if he sends her daughter back to Jin Yo Won, which he reluctantly agrees to. When they meet, before Uki can say anything, Naksu understands that she has been abandoned, but accepts it to save Yul. The problem is that they can't take Yul to Jinyuan in his critical condition, and they also can't take the bird out of the vault to bring it to Yul. To make matters worse, they need to use the bird's energy without awakening or breaking the protective barrier. As if it awakens, the world will be in danger. The doctor comes up with the idea of using the water wick from the Lantern of Life. He will use it to extract all of Yul's energy, which consequently would take the worm along with it. Then he will transfer this energy with the worm to Cho Yan, since the Jin family's energy is compatible with it. However, to avoid problems, the girl cannot be pregnant. With the concerned reaction of the couple upon hearing this, it's revealed that they have already had a more intimate relationship, and it would be too risky for Cho Yan. As Cho Yan cannot do it, her sister Bu Yan, Naksu, volunteers. The worm and its energy are sucked in and then transferred to Naksu, who cannot swallow or open her mouth. Heading to the location where the ritual will take place, she encounters the prince, and finally, they discover each other's true identities. She, that he is the prince, and he, that she is Ukwi's wife. Ukwi arrives and finds out that they already knew each other, and she had complained a lot about her husband to the prince. When the prince lifts her to put her inside the barrier, Ukwi becomes jealous realizing that the two seem to be quite close. The ritual is initiated to use the bird's energy, which is all absorbed by Naksu. A cut is needed for the prince to finally remove and kill the worm. Now it's Ukwi who picks her up to get her out of there, but ends up leaving the prince, who is also waiting to be carried. With their lips touching, Naksu returns the energy containing the essence of life to Yule. With the mission accomplished, now comes the time for separation. She expresses sadness for not being able to keep him warm and protected at night anymore, still believing that this is the reason he married her. Once again, being rude to keep her at a distance, he says she's like a brazier in the summer. In other words, useless. This time, she doesn't hold back her anger in the face of such cold remarks and states that this brazier will turn to ashes, while he can freeze to death for all she cares. Ukwi returns home and feels the emptiness and sadness of that place without her. He becomes depressed, reflecting on every moment they spent together, realizing that every corner of the house reminds him of her. Meanwhile, Jin Mu reveals to the prince the great secret that Ukui is the true son of the late king. He tries to pit them against each other, insinuating that Uki might be plotting to steal the throne from him. The next day, Yun Ok finds and reads without permission, a letter written by Yul revealing that Bu Yan is Naksu. Yul wakes up and seeks out Master Li, who advises him to pretend ignorance because soon Naksu would no longer be among them. 
Master Li lied to Lady Jin, and Bu Yon's soul continues to live and coexist with Naksu's soul. We find out that everything was planned by Bu Yon herself from the beginning of this story. She imprisoned Naksu's soul only to suck all her energy for her own gains. As soon as Bu Yon is strong and recovered, she will expel Naksu's soul forever. Meanwhile, unaware of what awaits her, Naksu encounters Ukui. After seeing the lamp flickering on and off several times, he decided to look for her. Still hurt, she treats him with indifference, just as he always did to her. He finally takes action, explaining that when he said she was no longer useful, it's because now he doesn't want her to remove the ice stone from inside him to let him die. Instead, he wants to keep living and together with her. When the lamp is on, he's fine, but when it goes out, he goes mad with longing. That's why, symbolically, she extinguishes the lamp because now she will be the one to warm him. They passionately and intensely kiss for a long time. When they finally part, Ukwi says they will get married for real, promising to get the blessing of her mother. Unfortunately, they no longer live together, and she doesn't want to be away from him, but he promises that he will see her even if he has to invade Jin Yuan to do so. Before parting, she says that she always knew from the moment she first saw him that he would be her husband. And this statement brings back memories for both of them. From the moment when Uki said the same thing to her years ago, that he always knew she would be his master. After paying tribute to So Yi, Yul decides to talk to Lady Jin to try to convince her to allow Bu Yan to return to live with Uki. He feels sad and distressed, knowing that Naksu's soul will disappear and wishes for her to spend the last moments being happy with Uki, whom she loves so much. He reveals the whole truth to Lady Jin and tells her that if she allows this to happen, Naksu will soon regain her memories and disappear, and she will have her true daughter back. When Yul and Naksu meet, she ends up having more memories, now from her childhood with Yul. He encourages her to go to the forest of the Great Tree to discover her true identity, even if it may be painful for her. She prefers to remain in ignorance rather than have memories that make her suffer, especially when she returns to Uki's house and sees the scar from the sword on his abdomen. She doesn't want to risk losing him again, determined to stay by his side forever. However, Yonoka hoping to separate her from Uki, overhearing her conversation with Yul, invades the pharmacy, taking the medicine that reveals the blue mark of soul changers. Since Naksu is running away from her memories, Yunok plans to force her to remember everything. She pours the magical liquid on Naksu, making her eyes glow blue. Yul arrives in time and manages to stop her, scolding her for stealing and reading his letter. But the mark is still visible to Naksu, who is shocked to see her reflection in the water. Her eyes blue as strong memories of the moment she practiced soul alchemy come rushing back. By boat, she sets off for her hometown to find the tree that would provide the answers she needed while more memories with Uki surface. When she faces the magnificent tree, it's as if she's watching a movie of her life, everything passing before her eyes. Everything comes flooding back, leaving her disoriented as she finally discovers who she is, who she loves, and what she did. Suddenly, she sees a younger Bu Yan, the owner of the body and the villain of the story, revealing that she fed on Naksu's energy which not even crazed soul changers do, to regain the divine power she had lost. And she leaves a message. Soon, Naksu will need to leave the body, and now that she has discovered everything, she will suffer until she dies. Meanwhile, the prince corners Uki, saying that if he doesn't intend to fight for the throne, then he must accept going to the northern fortress and stay there as a general. Strangely, the prince is following all of Jinmu's orders, even after he disappeared with the little turtle that the prince was so attached to. Even more strangely, Ukwi easily accepts the position of general of the fortress. When Uki finds Naksu, he sees her visibly shaken and disoriented. She feels guilty for causing him so much pain and suffering. Even though they have fallen in love with each other again, she feels that she cannot be with him, risking hurting him even more when she dies. Therefore, she tells him that she has regained her memories and with tears streaming down her face, even though it is difficult. She lies to him, saying that she deeply loves a man from her past, and therefore, Ukwi must forget her. 
she returns home alone, leaving Uki behind, devastated and confused. When she returns home, she chooses to stay in the old prison, seeming to give up on everything and just wait for death. Uki suffers in his home, feeling jealous of a man who doesn't even exist. Unable to bear this anguish, he invades Jin Yovon and makes his feelings clear to her. He tells her that he loves her and that she is the one who filled his empty heart. He warns that he is ready to go to the Northern Fortress, but promises to return earlier than expected and will be waiting for her. When he leaves, she breaks down in tears, feeling very guilty for being responsible for causing the greatest pain to the man she loves the most. Master Li knows that there is a forbidden magic, like soul alchemy, that a powerful wizard like Ukwi can practice. This spell would allow Uki to get rid of Bu Yan's soul and keep only Naksu's inside the body. But making such a choice would be agonizing and terrible for anyone, including Uki. Therefore, Master Li decides to keep this secret. Meanwhile, the prince continues to listen to Jin Mu, discovering things about the rain ritual, about his secret organization, and expressing his desire to be as powerful as Uki. Outside the palace walls, Jin Mu's chaos plan works as the population despairs seeing more of those bird statues drying up the lake. Jin Mu meets with his sister, and now it's his turn to humiliate her, warning that no priestess from her family will dance in the upcoming rain ritual. He says that nobody in her family has enough power for it, especially her, as she is aging and her powers are no longer the same. And everyone in the assembly has already agreed to this. Desolate, sad, and locked away, Naksu continued to wait for death until she hears the name Jin Mu. She remembers everything, including that he turned her into an assassin and ordered her to kill, including the man she loves. Now she seems determined to seek revenge, but before that, she finds the lost turtle of the prince. It truly has a special energy, the energy of the black turtle, which guides lost people in the right direction. It came to Naksu to help her find her way. So she confronts Jin Mu, even if it means helping her false mother not lose control of Jin Yuan. To do this, she needs to prove that there is a strong enough person in the family, and that person is herself. But of course, Jin Mu doubts this and decides to first test if her divine powers are back. However, this test seemed more like an invitation to death. She needs to enter a magical place that imprisons the most dangerous soul changers, created by the powerful priestess 200 years ago. Naksu needs to enter and find the plate that Jin Mu threw inside, but the trapped ghosts could kill her, just like what happened to another person who entered. Lady Jin is apprehensive and doesn't want to let her in. It's when Naksu, whispering to the woman, tells her to believe in the powers of her daughter because she will find the plate and they will both come back no matter what happens. It's at this moment that Lady Jin realizes Naksu has recovered her memories. Before she enters, the prince notices his turtle in her arms. She passes through the portal and along with the little turtle, ends up in a strange world. She follows the turtle from the beach to the forest where some scary ghosts begin to surround her. That's when she finds a skeleton and inside it, a glowing sphere. Curious, she reaches out to grab it, but this time, a more violent ghost appears in front of her, possessed by her approach, as if protecting that skeleton, and starts chasing her. Inside it, there's a red glow that seems to be drawn to the blue jade she has with her. Just as she would be caught by the ghost, Uki appears to save her. He destroys the ghost and, looking at her, notices the blue mark in her eyes as he asks who she really is. 